everyone. We were with you. We thought something was I wrong. pressed on Mr. Zoom, Bart but it Shalom. was the wrong Zoom. It was the meeting later, and I was the only one there. Uh, <laughs> oh, wrong well, place. Zoom room. Whatever. Anyway, maybe you'll you'll come by next week and you'll be here for the installation of Rabbi Singer. You know, just get on your magic carpet. <laughs> Am I going to be the only one on Zoom next week? No. No, not, if you no, join not the everyone Zoom comes world. in, you know, but it's it's Rabbi Singer's installation. So I'm going to magic carpet right in a nice, April. Uh, a nice showing. Barbara Turner, how nice to see Hello. you. Oh, thank you, Sonny. Likewise. Of Shabbat course. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. These are all the regulars here. Yeah. So someone has to greet next week. Don't forget. Bacha, what about you? Well, I should leave that up to the committee. <laughs> a committee. The greeting committee. I so so far have a committee of one. <laughs> <laughs> what are you eating? Nuts? How did you know that? Sonny should I sign in on her phone and give us a roving report or report. <laughs> well, I actually, when I was there, what was it, the week before last, I turned around and waved, but I'm sure no one saw me. No, we didn't. It wasn't aimed, you know. Oh, yeah. But I was sitting in the back that. anyway. And there I were 20 million people there anyway. Yeah. It was, it was actually, it was wonderful to have How's such a nice weather? showing. How's the weather, guys? Beautiful. Hot, oh. but beautiful. Hot. Oh, no. Yeah. But it's not as bad as California, where Joan May is. Oh, no. OK, two showed up. <laughs> oh, ah, there they oh. are. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, so cute. So cute. This one loves, loves, loves your daughter. <laughs> Kenta Shara's mom. Ah. You love well, Kenta Shara. Well, OK. OK. Very good. They're about to come out. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Well, oh, Wayne is here too. I haven't seen him in a while. Nice to see you. And you should say, nice to be seen. And Andrea, I didn't say hello to you either. And Bella. Nice to see you. Nice. Nice to see you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Wait, they're letting us talk longer. Either that or somebody is. Uh -huh. Uh -oh, here we go. Hi, Andy. Here we go. Sort of. Not quite. Come on home and let yourself heal You can sleep for a thousand years I won't let you disappear So let your heart be here I'm just giving you a little teaser The words are actually up on the screen there And you really, really have to sing this part I feel it in my ribs, I feel it in my soul, the pulse just grows so loud and so clear, let your heart be here. All right, I admit it, it this is not a Jewish song, if you're wondering, and you thought, there's more to learn of Judaism. I never heard that one before. Yeah, you're listening to a little dashboard confessional, folks. And just do it. Just sing along with me. So we start out by saying, Come on home and let yourself heal. You could sleep for a thousand years. I won't let you disappear. So let your heart here. I feel it in my ribs. I feel it in my soul. The pulse 
You canter. I was on a uh, a road trip uh, this summer, and you had been away for a couple for a month or so already. And just on random on Spotify came that song, and I was like, yes, yes, just in the rolling hills of Pennsylvania, just ah. I will. I will. <sighs> We've joined together now for the first Shabbat. Of Elul, Elul being the last month of the Jewish calendar, this incredibly holy and special month, where we begin our reflection, we begin our Cheshbon Nefesh. Literally, Cheshbon. If you go to a store in Israel and you paid for some ice cream, you would get a Cheshbon back or a receipt. And Nefesh being soul. A literal accounting of our soul of the last year. We look back, we reflect, we see all the places we hit the mark, all the places we missed the mark in this month of Elul, leading up to Rosh Hashanah and the High Holy Days. And I especially wanted to share a poem for Elul, written by Rabbi Baron Blatt, as she writes. Well, she writes in reference to a, uh, a a regular reading for the month of Elul, which has the king is in the field. So I just want to give that context. She writes, most years in Elul, we say the king is in the field. God walks with us in the tall grass to hear our yearnings. But this year, the Shekhinah shelters in place with us. With her, we don't need to mask our fears or our despair when we stay up too late reading the news again and again, or maybe binge watching The Good Place, desperate for redemption. She does too. As we practice social distancing, we're not alone. She summons angels to encourage the scallions that were regrowing, just as they cheer on the maples releasing their helicopter seeds, these compressed packages of hope for the eventual coming of spring. Marking the time when it might get a little bit darker, a little bit cooler. On Shabbat, we always remember to bring in the light. We bring in the light that every one of us brings. But to help bring in the actual Shabbat light, I get to invite up Lily Ginsberg, who is uh, an incredible regular at bringing her light uh, to Shabbat, especially our Saturday morning Torah study. Thank you, Lily. We are going to turn to page 120 uh, for our candle blessing.
as we've brought in the light, we also have to bring in that joy of Shabbat as we turn a couple pages forward to page 123 for our words of Kiddush, blessing the wine and the holiness of the day as we rise as one community in body or in spirit. Baruch atarunai Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. Baruch atarunai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kirishanu b'mitzvotam, b'ratzavanu. B'shabbat kodcho mi'ahava u'v'ratzon, inchilanu, zikaron l'masei v'reishit. Ki hu yom telchila l'mikro e'kodesh, zecher l'tziyat mitraim. Ki vanu v'achata, v'yotanu kidashta, mikol hamim. B'shabbat kodshecha l'ava u'v'ratzon, in khaltanu baruch atarunai mekadesh hashabat. Amen. I could have said, Cantor, that you're doing it in honor of My own the... My mitzvah tomorrow. I was, yeah, I was going to say the first uh, B'nai mitzvah of the season tomorrow morning. <laughs> so wonderful. I'm going to ask everyone to have a seat except for Laurel Overstreet. Hello, Laurel. It is such a blessing to have you up here on this Bima. We have been working and looking forward to this day, to your official naming. Uh, and I'm so excited because I'm going to invite the uh, clergy up. We're going to actually invite everyone to stand again. I know they just sat down, but we're going to open the ark, so we'll invite you to stand. There it is. Oops. So Laurel, I'll have you stand up in front of the, uh, the Torahs here. The Torahs representing not only our history, but our values and our stories. The stories which we hope will continue to guide you as you live a life that is enriched with Judaism. I have a couple of questions for you. Laurel. Do you choose to enter the eternal covenant between God and the people of Israel and to become a Jew of your own free will? Yes. Do you accept Judaism to the exclusion of all other religious faiths and practices? Yes. Do you pledge to bring a sense of loyalty, joy, and passion to Judaism and to the Jewish people? Yes. Do you promise to establish a Jewish home to participate actively in the life of the synagogue and the Jewish community? If you should have children, do you promise to raise them as Jews? Yes. Do you commit to continually building a meaningful relationship with the Jewish people? Yes. And do you commit yourself to the ongoing pursuit of Torah and Jewish knowledge? Yes. Especially that last one I knew was such a strong yes, because you are such a learner. Um, we have talked so much about history and your deep love of history you working in in museums and and really being a student of how history is taught uh, has been has led to some incredible conversations uh with you and i have learned so much from you i appreciate you so much i also just so deeply appreciate your family being here as well, uh, including your father, Reverend Overstreet, uh, who they've all come in from, uh, from Indiana to be here with you on this day. And they're sitting in your spot. <laughs> you sit in that same seat and it was so incredible to see your family there with you today as well. So I'm going to place this. This one's, this one's lighter, as I'll invite you to 
lead our whole congregation here in the words of the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. With this, with the answers you have given, having gone through the Beit Din and the immersion in mikvah, I get to publicly announce you as Zohar Bet Avraham Visara. May this name really be used in love and in peace and in those most joyful times uh, that you have in your life. And my clergy here, our clergy team, we have a blessing for you. So you're going to stay right up here. No, no, no. <laughs> and we all have a blessing for Laurel as well. So I'm going to invite us all to hold our hands up to give Laurel this beautiful blessing. May God bless you and protect you. May that light that you shine into the world, may it shine back upon you as well. And may you, may you be seen in that light and graciousness. May you always feel yourself connected to a divine presence. May that lift you and may that bring you peace. And to that we all say, Amen. Amen. We may be seated, Laurel. Laurel, Laurel, Laurel. Mm -hmm. We're going to turn back to our prayer books as we've invited the light, we've invited the joy, we've invited Laurel into our space. We invite the Sabbath bride with Lechado D, page 138. Lechado D, Dodi <laughs> Dodi <laughs> We rise and face the entrance as we invite in the Sabbath bride. Oh, We remain standing and continue on page 146. لا 
Lai, 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 lai. Try that. Lai, 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 lai. Lai, 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 lai. Lai, 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 lai. Lai, 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 lai. Lai, 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 lai. Barehu. Shema. Page 152. Mia hafta et Adonai Elohecha, the Holeva Chaubachonav Shecha, who the Home Neodacha, the Hayu Hadvarim Haela, Asher Anohim Mitzacha, Hayom Aleva Vecha, the Shinantam Leva Necha, the Ribarta Bam. Beshitacha, bevetacha, uvlachtacha, vaderach, u shok becha, uvtumecha, uksartam leot, aliadacha, the hayulitotafot, bene necha, uktav tam, al mizuzot betacha, uvisharecha, le man titru, vatsitem, et komitvotai, vihitem kiroshim, lelo hechem. Ani Adonai Elohechem, Asher Otsei Tiachem, Meretz Mitzrayim, Liot Lachem, Lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem. There is a whole kind type of Jewish story about the people of the town of Chelm that they are not the brightest in the box, but they are true lovers of community and of Judaism. And so this Yiddish folk tale is really speaking to me today. One of the wise men of Helm said to his wife, if I were to be the Tsar, I would be even richer than the Tsar. How is that possible, asked his wife. Well, said the sage, if I were the Tsar, I would do a little teaching on the side. We all do our own little teaching on the side, whether it is uh, for a little extra making the ends meet or the ways that we teach our history and the ways that we were all slaves in Egypt and what that means and how that speaks to us today and how we march to freedom as we sang the words of Micha Mocha on page 158. <laughs> Bokeh ayam lifne Moshe u Miriam. Say 
We turn the page, we go from that marching, that excitement to freedom to realizing the place that we are, that we need help in all that we do. And if we ask for that help in the evening with the words of Hashki Benu. Hashki Benu Adonai Eloheinu Shalom the Hamide. Shomreinu lechayim lechayim hashkiveinu Adonai Eloheinu leshalom v'hamideinu shomreinu lechayim lechayim ufro. As we turn to page 162, in Torah, we are told to shomer Shabbat, literally to keep, to protect, to shomer Shabbat. But our prayer here is the Shamru, saying that we, it is in the plural, we keep Shabbat. Because we can do it, each of us on our own, but how much more powerful we are when we organize, when we come together, when we put our efforts together to do greatness. And so with the community feeling going into this, Page 162, Veshamru, we the people keep Shabbat. Veshamru, Israel <laughs> Shabbat Shabbat we rise for the words of the Amida, and in preparation for those words, we'll, I want to read together, praying in the English in the middle of page 165, as are preparing for this. Pray with me here in the English. Prayer invites God's presence to suffuse our spirits, God's will to prevail our lives. Prayer may not bring water to parched field, nor mend a broken bridge, nor rebuild a ruined city, but prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, rebuild a weakened will. Na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na
Take a moment of privacy, silent prayer, each of us in our own way.
I don't think that I've sat on this side of the sanctuary in, in quite a while. And I don't know if, if any of you have, but being able to be in the space of these extraordinary musicians who bring their souls to everything that they do, to be that close to them is like being lifted. It's just extraordinary. And we had this experience last Friday night, but there were two people who weren't here because they were creating holiness in a different space. Uh, because Ethan Parcell wrote an extraordinary opera that then was performed with some other musicians who have his same soulfulness, one of whom is Hannah Bureau. So we know what kind of a soul she has. And Ethan, if you don't mind, I'll just share just a little bit about how your opera landed on me. Um, and a little bit, we had so many conversations in our family. Uh, our sons went to see it also, who are 12 and 14, and my husband Damien was there too. And actually, Minkyu was there, and um, Rabbi Gilman was there, and Cantor Ben David was there the night before. I mean, there was a lot of love and, and holiness in the room. And I just want to say that this, this whole opera came about if I may say so, and, and you know, when, when the author is right here or the, the composer is right here. But because there was a, a billboard that was one of those electronic billboards, but it was on the fritz. And so while it was on the fritz, it was just flashing colors, but really didn't have anything that it was saying. So Ethan, in his beautiful, soulful way, was trying to get to the bottom of it and also felt like, well, then in that way, it could be telling us almost anything. So Ethan played with some of the things that it could be saying to us. And one of those that really stuck with me, actually all of them did, but one I wanted to bring to us this evening. Um, and that is, um, well, Ethan, would you, can I give you this? And I'm gonna come up to the top emails while you do that. Um, maybe, maybe Hannah could play it first and then I'll tell you the words and then we'll sing it a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> And the words are, there are townspeople who come to you for their medicine. So together it sounds like this. There are towns, people who come to you for their medicine. That's the whole song. So I'll just say a word and then maybe we will sing it a few times. So for me, the way that I wanted to bring it to all of us is because it made me think about the way in which townspeople communities, we depend on each other for the things that bring us healing, for our medicine. And really, in some ways, I feel like every time we sing the Misha Berach together, I'm thinking about which townspeople, which Sholem people, which people in my family, which people in our city, which people whom I know who are counting on me in some small way. Is that, Helene, are you letting me know that you can't hear me very well? Thank you. <laughs> so it makes me think every time we spend our Shabbat and sing for people's healing, I think about who's depending on me in some small way to alleviate just one sixtieth of their suffering, which the Talmud tells us we're each responsible for. How do I make sure that I'm thinking about that? And who here do I count on to do that together? So as we sing this a few times through, even before we sing the words of Misha Berach, I invite you to think about who depends on you for their medicine. Who do you depend on for your medicine? What do you bring them and what do you need? Let's sing.
So we think of those who are in need of healing, of body, of mind, of spirit. We share their names as they come up into our hearts. We'll invite them to be shared by name online here. So those of you at home, we invite you to share those names on the chat. And we invite you here in the sanctuary to share those names aloud. The words of Misha Barak are found on page 371. As we hold all those who are in need of healing in our hearts as we sing these words. Misha Barak, Abotenu, Mokor Habraha, Imotenu, May the soul of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say amen Bless those in need of healing with Rafua Shalema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, was this little dream in me that you were going to then play that Nigun one more time. <laughs> <laughs> because it just, I just, just love the way in which we are responsible for one another. And I'll just say that as, um, as Rabbi Gelman introduced our service, saying that we're in the month of Elul, this is our first Shabbat in the month of Elul, in this time of introspection, this time before the High Holy Days that what we do is we say that this is a time to see what are we doing with our lives and how do we make each other better? And I'll say that what I appreciate, many of the ways that we, we teach about ELUL, one of them is that it's an acronym. ELUL, Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed, is an acronym for Ani Lidodi Vidodi Li. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Which sometimes when we think about introspection and think about what we're doing with our lives and thinking about our cheshbon nefesh, our, our really our bill of our soul, how are we doing on that? That we don't always think about how much we, our souls are in each other's hands, that our well-beings are in each other's hands, that we're responsible for one another and if anything says that well, it is that place from Song of Songs that says, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. We belong to one another. And in this time of Elul, often we find that the Shabbat falls, at least one of the Shabbat, the Shabbatot of Elul, that we find that it matches up with Labor Day that we actually have this time in which we're thinking about how much we belong to one another, our well-being in is, is in each other's hands around the time of Labor Day. And I'll say that what I love about Arise Chicago, two of whose representatives we'll hear from this evening, what I love about Arise Chicago, which is a, an extraordinary 
uh, organization that looks for the rights of workers and looks out for how we are responsible one for the other is that they understand that sometimes in order to get the inspiration for what we do in our secular lives is actually grounded in sacred text. So that you're called or, or Arise Chicago is called Arise. Why? Because they're looking at the words of Isaiah who says, Arise and shine for your light has come. We understand how much. By the way, we'll hear that in our Haftarah in just a couple of weeks. We'll hear Isaiah say that to us in the month of Elul to remind us how much we're responsible for one another. That if we want to be able to see this vision of having our light shine out in the world and feel like we can arise, it means that we have to look out, what are we doing in our work lives? What are we doing for workers who are most vulnerable? How is it that we all have work lives that are filled with dignity? How do we make sure that people are cared for one to another? Well, Arise Chicago has wonderful people who say that the way that we do that is by being able to work together. Margarita Klein and Frank Klein do that beautifully, and they'll teach us about what they're doing and what we can do in order to support them. So Margarita and Frank, thank you so much for being here. I do want to give you a little bit of a formal introduction. Margarita Klein is the daughter of political refugees from Chile and has been dedicated to workers' rights and social justice for over two decades. Margarita has experienced training teams of workers to create workplace demands, win union representation, and make concrete workplace improvements. Margarita has won awards for Labor Woman of the Year from the Chicago Federation of Labor and has been featured and profiled with the Chicago Tribune. She is currently Director of Member Organizing with Arise Chicago. We're honored that you're here. And you don't come alone. You're here this evening with Frank, who's a native Chicagoan and graduate of Loyola University. Born into a union family, he is a 30 plus year veteran of the labor movement, having started with the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. He is currently a division director of SEIU Local 73 with responsibilities including Chicago Public Safety for Parks and Social Service Workers. And Frank, you've been a builder at Mishcon since June 2021. You're married to Margarita and you have three children and three grandchildren. What an honor to welcome you to this BEMA. Knowing that our microphones up there are not working so well, we'll want to share with you. Oh, we will, we'll, we'll make them work well. I mean, we, we need to hear from Margarita and Frank, we'll make sure that they work well. So let's welcome them to our BEMA now. Thank you. I know everybody was like, well, on Shabbat, are we to clap when people come to the BEMA? You could, if you want them to feel welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for the lovely introduction and Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm going to go first, and uh, she made me go first. Yeah, I forced him. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay, uh, I don't recall exactly when these lines of scripture really spoke to me for the first time. The spirit of the Lord God was upon me to bring tidings to the humble. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, declare freedom for the captives, and for the Lord who loves, I am the Lord who loves justice. For the Lord your God holds the cause of the fatherless and the widow who loves the stranger, providing them with food and clothing. You too must love the stranger. You shall not wrong a stranger or oppress them. Maybe it was at the parish youth group 
I know they spoke loudly to me at the seminary at Loyola. Oh, okay, you got me. <clears throat> I wasn't always a Jew. But then again, there is that tradition that all Jewish souls that ever were and would be were at Sinai. You know, Sarah Zimmerman, a union steward I had the pleasure of working with at JCFS, insists that at least a year before I put in the call to Rabbi Dina Cowan at Mishkan that I had to be Jewish. Klein, very liberal, pro-immigrant, pro-labor. Come on, she'd say, you're Jewish. So I guess that that tradition must be on target. I mean, if you knew Sarah, for her to say it's so, it had to be so. Now, don't get me wrong. I had very fine role models, and there were many socially conscious, uh, conscious seminary and university instructors. But when in prayer or meditation, no matter the direction or the content, my soul so very often drifted to Elijah's whispering breeze on the mountain and those sources of my beliefs and values, the things I didn't have to do mental gymnastics about. And so eventually I asked myself, if these are the sources of my values, how do I make them real in the world, in the here and now? Another Jewish idea I would later learn, beliefs must be put into practice. Jonathan Sachs in his Siddur commentary points out that the prophets saved their most biting prose for those who paid meticulous attention to the sacrificial rituals while ignoring the conditions of the poor, the widow, the orphan, the stranger beyond the temple walls. So the question, who today is the broken heart, hearted in need of mending? Who is the stranger in need of food and clothing? Who is the captive in need of freeing? And what is the nature of their captivity? These questions eventually brought me into the labor movement, usually working with those toward the bottom of the economic pyramid. And more recently, also with those workers who offer services to our society's most vulnerable, and I might say also uh, brought me to eventually to Judaism. Uh, and in fact, <coughs> uh, I'm currently working with social service workers, uh, working with many of our uh, of Chicago's most vulnerable, uh, including those at the Jewish Federation with whom we are currently in negotiations. And I want to do a brief recognition to those union stewards, bargaining committee members, and others, both at the Jewish Federation and elsewhere, who have taken the welfare of their co-workers and of the community and are working hand-in-hand -hand with our partners uh, on the management side to come to uh, an agreement which will bring uh, fairness to all of us in a very uh, uh, difficult uh, uh, and changing uh, landscape. I'd like to... Uh, Pass the baton to my wife, Margarita. Good evening. Um, again, my name is Margarita Klein, and I'm with uh, uh, Arise Chicago. We are a multi faith workers' rights organization with a mission to connect faith communities and workers to work against injustice in the workplace. Our economy has placed a tremendous burden on workers, particularly over the past two years. Our country, as healthcare workers, first responders, grocery workers, farm workers, and so many more, to sacrifice greatly to keep our economy going. Our society called them heroes, and yes, these workers are some of the lowest paid and worst treated workers in our society. I have spoken with family members of hospital workers and teachers uh, who explain how their spouses and parents died from COVID and what it was like not to be able to be there in the hospital room with them. So many of the social ills in our society come back to the idolatry of wealth. A few can have a lot at the expense of the many. This idolatry, has led to massive economic inequality in the United States that has skyrocketed over the past 40 years. We are currently at a label not seen since the Great Depression. This ideology has pervert every country around the world, but this is nothing new. 
all workers should be treated at the workplace with dignity and respect. And that includes a guarantee to uh, the workers has time for his or her religious duties. Ensuring safe working conditions and prevent workplace injuries. Being paid a just wage. Not being forced to work such a long hours that home and family life are neglected. Our society is clearly not living out these values. In Cook County, every week, $7.3 million are being stolen from low wage workers. Low wage workers have been disproportionately impacted by the pandemic and so much more. As we begin the slow process to rebuilding our economy, the question becomes, what kind of economy do we want to rebuild? Uh, these efforts to rebuild economies must create a future with equal, decent, and dignified working conditions. One of the best ways to achieving these goals is through collective bargaining. This Labor Day, let us not only honor all workers who have been excluded from our economy, but recommit ourselves to securing dignified working conditions for all. Arise is striving to bring dignified working conditions to all domestic workers. In the city of Chicago, there is a new law that bring domestic, uh, domestic workers up to the uh, minimum pay of 15, 40 cents an hour. Uh, and mandates uh, to people who hire domestic workers to have a contract, a written contract for them, which is now a privilege of uh, most of union uh, workers. So we are saying we hope this will inspire a change in the treatment of domestic workers, not only in Chicago, but in Cook County and around the state of Illinois. Guaranteeing collective bargaining rights of workers is essential in creating a just economy. The Workers' Rights Amendment is a proposed amendment to the Constitution to the state of Illinois that will guarantee the right of all future generations. The basic right of workers to organize must be respected in any economic initiative. We know that is most essential in the creation of a beloved community that never ceases to strive for the dignity of workers and work itself. As a community of faith, we must be engaged and stand in solidarity with all workers. This is why we need organizations like Arise Chicago, which connect our broad interfaith network with working people. On this Labor Day, let us remember the sacred link between our faith, our work, and workers everywhere. Happy Labor Day <laughs> and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Margarita and Frank. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for your work. And thank you for that sacred message. So we have some announcements. Yeah. And I'll start off with Wednesday is in September. I assume starting this Wednesday um, is uh, Rabbi Singer. Uh, we are restarting uh, the fall. Uh, Adult education on Wednesday mornings, our adult study group, uh, as Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., either on Zoom or in person. And Rabbi Singer, who's away at a Jewish summer camp for adults weekend, um, uh, she is uh, starting us off uh, this Wednesday talking about Musar and Midot, uh, which are those practices of spiritual reflection, especially now in time for the high holidays. Beautiful. And I can hardly wait. I know. For next Friday night at 6.15, everybody 
must be here. I know that actually I don't even have to say that to you because nobody wants to miss this. When Rabbi Singer is officially installed as our incredible uh, newest rabbi to our team, we are so grateful and we can hardly wait. Rabbi Sarah Luria will be installing her, which means that we'll be giving a very sacred charge to her um, and to our community for how we need to be able to make this connection and this relationship work for as long as we're lucky enough to have Rabbi Singer as part of this team 20 years. So <laughs> please, please oh, um, join us um, on, on next Friday night, September 9th, 6.15. Uh, rabbi Sor Sarah Loria is also an extraordinary rabbi. You don't want to miss her message either. And then a couple days later, it is Shofar in the park at 6 p.m. It's in person only, I believe. Yes. Yeah, it's in the park. Um, we have and less technology. We'll be there. hearing the blast of the Shofar um, during this month of Elul, and it will bring us into the High Holy Days in the most beautiful, beautiful sound waves. Yeah, and there are three places that you can join us at 6 p.m. on September 11th. And that is at Wells Park, at Hamlin Park, and here in the Temple Sholem parking lot. That was really helpful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and our final thing is, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, I thought Temple Sholem was going to the Cubs game on the afternoon, September 11th. But as they say, there are forces out of our control. And in this case, those forces were ESPN. Um, <laughs> as uh, the ESPN forced the time change of that game. So we have changed to the week after. So our whole Temple Shalom community, especially uh, guided by our Mishpacha, uh, our family programming, uh, is we're all heading to the Cubs game on September 18th at 1.20. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, now you have even a little extra time to join us. It should be a fantastic time together. And I'll just clarify that Mishpacha is going to have its own section for families who want to be there with children. And then there's also um, other sections too. So we'll all, it, it will be a mix and match, wonderful intergenerational fun time to be had. Um, so we look forward to seeing you there, um, but not as much as we're looking forward to seeing you here uh, next Friday night for Rabbi Singer's installation. Mm -hmm. With that, we turn now to page 586 to the bottom of that page as we sing the words of Alenu. Please rise. Alenu le shabeach ladon hakol, la tekrula le otsebre shi, shelo asanu kegoye haratzol, velo samanu kemishpachot adama, shelo sam kelkenu kahem. Bayom hahu, bayom hahu, yihye Adonai echad. Ushmo, ushmo, ushmo echad. If you've been standing, you can remain standing. As I share just um, briefly these words written by Abraham Joshua Heschel that I think speak so beautifully before Kaddish. He once wrote that Judaism teaches us to be attached to the holiness of time, to be attached to sacred events, to learn how to consecrate sanctuaries that emerge from the magnificent stream of the year. And I don't know, but for anybody who's ever gone through that first year of mourning a loved one, there's nothing like marking those sacred times during that first year. But we recognize the absence, and we also recognize as we go through that year, how that time makes things just a bit easier. How we're able to return to that time of year with precious memories 
And then after that first year of mourning, we enter that second year, with a little more appreciation and gratitude, a little less of the, that acute pain. And as we go through this, all of us together consecrating our time and our year, we realize the ways in which we find solace together as a community. And so right now, we know that there are those who are in the first days of their mourning. We're thinking especially of loved ones of Toby Kessler, Babette Hyman, Alexander Cott, Mark Joel Behar, and Andre Geiskins Wouters. And we know that we're also marking the yard site, the returning of the anniversary of the deaths of Alexandra Alexavaya, Doris Allen, Richard Walter Bain, sorry, Richard Walter Bain, Mace Barrett, Jerome Berger, Abraham Kalisoff, Benjamin Cohen, Myron Michael Cooper, Bertram Dalek, Theodore Teddy Davis, Joan Fetter, Ari Fleischer, Sidney Hess Jr., Edith Edie Levy, Max Manister, Susan Mazur, Robert Nemes, Joseph Newman, Mark Pasternak, Pauline Rosinski, Min Rutberg, Arlene Rosenson, Louis Rubin, John Isaac Schlossman, Irene Schneider, Morris Spinka, Joseph Steinberg, Dr. Joseph Tarnoff, and others whom we are remembering this evening. Thank you. And others we're remembering? Kadisha Tom, the mourner's Kaddish is found on page 598. Yitkadal, the Yitkadash Shemeraba, the Alma divra Hirute, the Amlich Malkute, the Hayehon of Yomehon, the Haye, the whole Beit Israel, Bagalau Vizman Kari Vimru. Yehe Shemeraba, the Vorach, the Olam Ulalme Almaya, Yit Barach, the Ishtabach. Vit paar, vit romam, vit nasse, vit adar, vit alev, vit alal, shmed kursha. Leila min kol virchata vishirata, tush bechata vnechamata, da miran bialma, vimru. Yehe shlama raba min shemaya, vechayim alenu vial kol Israel, vimru. O se shalom bimromav, via se shalom, alenu vial kol Israel, vimru. Amen. O se shalom bim Roma, uya se shalom aleinu, ve al ko Yisrael, ve imru, imru, amen. So we're going to change things up a little bit this evening. So while we often have our oneg in Betty Port Hall, Tonight, we're going to have it in Lakeshore Lobby. Thanks to Julie Adler. So thank Julie, you, Julie, thank you. And, uh, and so this evening, as we conclude our service, um, we're so looking forward to the way in which I think that the cantor has something in mind. I couldn't catch it completely. <laughs> But I, I loved I loved the sense of excitement that well, came been, when you came I've over. I've been dreaming here. and humming it since I last sat at the Steppenwolf Theater. So are you ready? There are towns, people that come to you for their medicine. There are towns, people that come to you for their medicine. There are towns, people that come to you for their medicine. There are towns, 
people that come to you for their medicine. So as our hearts beat here in the month of Elul, as our vision goes out beyond just the sanctuary to try to see how it is that people will feel that Elul is here for all of us. Ani Dodi Vidodi Li. We are each other's beloveds. We are in sacred community. This world is our community. Let the love from this sanctuary beat everywhere. And to that we say Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom.